My name is Matt Lees and this is a video about Pillars of Eternity and whether or not it is a good game. Is it a good game, Matt? Well, yes it is, and I'll tell you why. But hold those horses, sausages, because I haven't even actually played it that much. Why haven't I played it that much? Because my god, it is a huge game. And I'd like to say that yes, I've played a huge chunk of it and making a video with all of the knowledge of that, but frankly, I do not know when that's going to happen. I don't know when I'm going to have time to actually get far enough into this to give you a proper verdict. It still might happen. You still might get a big chunky video at some point, but frankly, it's very likely to never ever happen, baby. So I'm just going to do a little thing now to tell you why it's good and why you might like it. And sorry, but I am going to be diving in mainly from the perspective of people who've played Baldur's Gate 2 and Planescape Torment, or maybe, you know, a little bit on the Dragon Age Origins side of things. Because yeah, it's basically another Baldur's Gate 2 style game. It's basically another Infinity Engine game. It's a new engine, but it's basically the old one, and that's fine, because it was a very good engine. And Pillars make some notable improvements straight off the bat. First of all, you've got these skill stats which affect conversations in a much more fluid and consistent way, which means you don't have to just focus on intelligence if you want to get the most interesting conversation options. And this tweaking in terms of how the stats works can also be seen in the way that they've kind of ditched some of the genuinely mad Dungeons & Dragons stuff. You know, there's a lot of second edition stuff back in the early 2000s, which has kind of been lost now for this, which is good. Another game design relic that's been basically binned is the fact that now if you want to, you can just have access to your item stash at any point in the world. And that means that you don't have characters being over encumbered with stuff. You just pick up absolutely everything you want to loot and you put it all into an infinite box in the sky and then you sell it all. Sure, it's not realistic and you can switch this option off. But I just want to collect all the things and make all the money, so thank you for letting me do that. Bye! Another simple change is now you've got limited ability to be camping when out and about, which means you can't do that classic trick of just sleeping, opening a door, killing one enemy, sleeping forever and ever and ever. It was cheap, but yes, we all did it. And tying into that is the revamped way that living and dying works. Basically, you don't just kind of get characters killed when their health hits zero, they get kind of knocked out of the fight. But then they have two health bars. They have endurance, which is how much health they have in a fight, but then they have health, which when that hits zero, that character will be maimed. And then after they've been maimed, if they get hit in combat again and killed, then they are actually killed. But it means that permadeath is not something that you have to constantly worry about. You don't have to be like, oh, God, and you won't lose people unless you are being stupid. Purists will roll their eyes at this, but anyone sensible, it's a good thing. A long 50 hour to 100 hour RPG is not a suitable environment for worrying about permadeath. But if you do want to do permadeath, then the good thing about Pillars is there's a lot of tweaking here. You go into the options and you can really tweak with everything. You can turn off maiming so people just die. You can make it a bloody Iron Man style XCOM game. You can make it so that when you choose different conversation options, they tell you the character trait that you're using. Or you can make it so it's just a pure RPG conversational experience where there are stats being logged and things being tracked, but you don't know about them. That's how I like to play it. And this tweaking goes right down into the sort of game that you want it to be. The characters you meet throughout the game, the companions are fantastic. Fantastic, really interesting, brilliant, fleshed out little people. But if you just want an Icewind Dale style experience, you just want to make your own team of people and go off into the wild with your own very carefully crafted set of heroes, you can do that as well. And as far as I can tell, Pillars is massive. There's tons of things you can do. I mean, they've added an entire keep system, which means you get your own little keep and you can upgrade it and add new buildings to it. And underneath it, there's a massive dungeon with something horrible underneath it. It's kind of ridiculous in terms of scale, and that's part of the reason I'm just telling you what it's like now, rather than waiting until I've finished it, because that's just maybe never gonna happen, but that's fine, because it's really good. The moment at which I realized that Pillars was the real deal, the real McCoy, the big cheese, etc., and other things, was when I found myself looking on bookcases and reading the books. Because I think, oh, I want to know more about that topic, actually, I'll read that book. It's like, I haven't done this in years. RPGs have got into the habit of putting books you can read bloody everywhere, but I never really care about them, you know? It's not a world which makes me care about it enough for me to want to understand its history. In Pillars of Eternity, I do. And I don't know about you, but I presume that that was just because 
I was a teenager and I had tons of time and I would get sucked into anything quite easily, but no, it turns out that actually it's more to do with the quality of the world and the quality of the writing and it comes out in droves. Late last year I made a video about Divinity Original Sin and the fact that it seemed to herald a return to the era of the classic RPG. Now that game didn't quite get everything right, it had a really good combat system and it had a lot of interesting stuff going on within it, but in terms of the writing and in terms of the story it wasn't quite there. It was decent, it was quite good, but it wasn't really excellent. Pillars of Eternity is excellent. Right from the very start of the game you're introduced to tons of interesting lore and ideas and it really just draws you in then continues to compound that keeps pulling the rope with new characters new exposition and then letting you just go off and explore and pull at threads i want to know more about this i want to get more involved in this specifically it is very good now i can't assure you that it continues to be very good for 20 30 100 hours because i've only played it for about six but honestly the six i have played leave me very much assured that this is the kind of game that I've been waiting for. As someone who grew up with Baldur's Gate 2 and Planescape Torment and would not shut up about how good those games were, this is another one of those games. And it wasn't just nostalgia. It wasn't just us looking back and going, oh, games used to be better back in the day. No, in many ways they really were, because just having this game which was just about writing allowed the people making the game to create these incredibly rich, interesting, intricate worlds full of conversations and ideas and discoveries which could draw you in in a way that frankly games like the truly rather bland and expansive Oblivion and Skyrim have just been pretending at. This is the real deal. But yeah, obviously, don't just take it from me. There are going to be people out there who've played this game a lot more than me who will have a much more succinct and overall view of it. I'd recommend checking out what PC Gamer write about it because I think they're usually really on the money with this stuff. But if you're specifically somebody like me who really appreciates story and games and writing and loved Baldur's Gate 2 and loved Planescape Torment and really misses that kind of quality of game, then frankly, Pillars of Eternity is a no-brainer. Honestly, just dive in. If you're someone else on the fence, maybe you played Dragon Age and liked it, you're not really sure, eh, go and read some stuff. Go and read some more stuff. Everyone else, just get in. This is good. I'm making this video now specifically so I can go and play it for the rest of the day. I'm going now. I'm going to play it. Bye! Wow.